It, it's an unbelievable sight. I've never seen something like this. And I'm 20 years on this job. This is the worst I've ever seen it before. It, 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 it's unbelievable, the, the devastation. Uh, we got burnt cars. We have the top of the World Trade Center topple onto the street. We have possible. We don't know how many people are missing right now. We don't have we don't have that number yet, but I'm sure that there is. There've been web heard reports that there are just bodies littering the street. Uh, well, there's reports of people trapped inside the building, but we haven't you know we have we haven't gone. We, we we can't go in yet until the fire is under control. When you first saw it and walked up to it, I'm, you heard it as you were racing to it, but to see it's another thing. What's the first thing that went through your head just after initially seeing it? I just wanted to cry. To be honest with you, it's terrible. Thank you, Lieutenant. Stay Two, one. This is about as close to ground zero as you can possibly get. Bye.
Speed. Whenever you're ready. Three, two, one. We are in an abandoned skyscraper, and quite frankly, I don't even know where I'm at. I see a sign outside that just gives me a reference of Barclay Street. As you can see all around here, the windows have been blown completely out. And as we take to a walk towards the front, towards the front of the building here, you want to take a look outside. If you have never been to war, like I have never been to war, then this is what it looks like. We don't know what that building is. We don't know where, where this building is, but they're obviously on fire. Maybe in, 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 there's a chance that they could collapse. I've been on this earth for 37 years. I've never been to a war, but I can only imagine that uh, this is as close as I've ever come. I'm gonna walk outside and go up to the corner and see if we can scoot out and move in. Low to the corner. One of the two towers stood. It's not there. It's a surreal environment. It's it's almost impossible to describe. Again, except to make a little correlation. 
with an update as to what's happening there at the moment. Vince? I can tell you, uh, I've just been a place that I have uh, been to that, frankly, uh, no firefighters want to go to. Behind me, UC Burning 7 World Trade Center. I didn't know it at the beginning, at the tape you're about to see. I didn't know it was the 7 World Trade Center, but I know it now coming back. A four block radius has been cordoned off because fire officials expect that building to collapse. I've been within 10 feet of that building within the last 15 minutes. I've been as close to where no one wants to be. Take a look. first saw it and walked up to it, I'm, you heard it as you were racing to it, but to see it's another thing. What's the first thing that went through your head just after initially seeing it? I just wanted to cry, to be honest with you. It's terrible. We are in an abandoned skyscraper, and quite frankly, I don't even know where I'm at. I see a sign outside that just gives me a reference of Barclay Street. As you can see all around here, the windows have been blown completely out. And as we take to a walk towards the front, towards the front of the building here, you want to take a look outside. If you have never been to war, like I have never been to war, then this is what it looks like. We don't know what that building is. We don't know where, where this building is, but they're obviously on fire. Maybe in, 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 there's a chance that they could collapse. I've been on this earth for 37 years. I've never been to a war, but I can only imagine that uh, this is as close as I've ever come. It, it's an unbelievable sight. I've never seen something like this. And, and I'm 20 years on this job. This is the worst I've ever seen it before. It, 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 it's unbelievable, the, the devastation. Uh, we got burnt cars. We have the top of the World Trade Center top along to the street. We have possible. We don't know how many people are missing right now. We don't have we don't have that number yet, but I'm sure that there is. There have been I've heard reports that there are just bodies littering the street. Uh, well, there's reports of people trapped inside the building, but we haven't you know we have we haven't gone. We we, we can't go in yet until the fire is under control. <laughs> More debris falling from a nearby building, the World Trade Center. We're at West Broadway in Barclay. Very difficult to breathe here, but look around. This must have been ground zero where this thing blew up. Car after car after car, buses completely obliterated and burned straight down to the steel. 
behind me, that gaping hole, that's where one of the two towers stood. It's not there. And as you can see above me, the fire in this adjacent building just continues to rage. It's a surreal environment. It's, it's almost impossible to describe. Again, except to make a war correlation. Whoever said somebody declared war on us, it certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Where, Vince, can, can you hear us now? Firefighter, the firefighter that you heard in that piece, his name is Lieutenant John Jinta. He talked about wanting to cry at the sight of what he saw. I can now identify with what he's talking about. He talked about bodies in the street. I didn't see any. He talked about people being trapped in that rubble. But as many of you well know, and I, I'm, frankly, I'm not sure who's on the anchor desk, but I have many friends in the law enforcement community, and I've talked to friends of theirs today, and I found out that many of my friends are in that building, one or two that have collapsed. And uh, you try to distance yourself from this stuff, but when it hits home, it's a far different story. So my prayers right now go out to their families and the families of everyone who's been affected by this. I'll throw it back to you in the studio. It's, uh, we, we join you in what you have just expressed, and uh, we're also very sorry about the, uh, the, the personal involvement that you have in that story. Um, can you stay with us for a moment, Vince? Sure. Sure. You, is this Ernie? Yes. You, and Dana. You, Ernie and Dana. Uh, you describe what is very much uh, the warlike atmosphere there, and seeing you with your mask on and walking through was just incredible, and that's uh, compelling television, if you will, not to mention the magnitude of the, the loss here and the depth of the story. How did you get in there? Well, we just, uh, you know, again, you, you hate to make these, these war correlations, but uh, my photographer and I, Terrence, you know, we just went from street to street, building to building, alley to alley and we just weaved our way in uh, you know when we got as far as we thought we could go we you know we talked it to each other and of course safety was amongst our concern and we just said let's let's just keep going let's see how far we can get to this without endangering our own safety and uh, when you saw how close we got to what I now realize behind me seven world trade on fire and expected to collapse you know what was really frightening is is that mm -hmm. when we were looking around there was nobody there it was us, and that was it. And I think at that point, the realization was that we were really in a place where we really just needed to, to get yes. as much video as we possibly could to show everybody just the, just the total devastation and the destruction and then just get out. Well, it was dramatic to watch, and we also have some video right now that we're looking at. You interviewed one of the firefighters there. You were talking about the number of people that are missing. Uh, he said that they don't know. There are many trapped inside, but they can't go in, I, I heard him say, until that fire is under control. Uh, do you have anything more on that as to when they might be able to get in there? Ernie, all I can tell you is that everyone that is talking to me right now, fire officials, police officials, emergency officials are telling me They'd love to go in there and do whatever they can to try to rescue anybody that might still be alive. But they can't. There are too many things on fire. There are too many buildings that they are concerned with collateral damage that could collapse at any minute. And imagine the catastrophe that would then take place that if you sent in hundreds, maybe thousands of rescuers to be in that situation, to have 50, 60, 70 tall skyscrapers around them collapse on them. It's wrenching their hearts. This is what they get paid to do. But right now, nobody can go in. Right. You just can't. Vince, I know it wrenches your heart, too. You and I have worked together for several years here, and as I look at you standing out there, I uh, think of you at TWA Flight TWA flight 800 out in that boat in the water in that dark night after that plane crashed and I know how moved you were by that and how moved you are by this and we're not talking about comparing tragedies here but we're talking about what we do for a living and I know that it is hard as you do this work and we commend you for what you do as you've told these stories thank you you're welcome thank, thank you, you Vince and as we say to you as to all of our reporters and all the people that are out there be careful real quick hold on yeah we're quick It'll take two seconds to fire this up. Hold on. Speak. Go. Your name, ma'am. Barbara Crowley. 
T-R-O-W-L-E-Y. NYU Medical Center. Okay, tell me okay. what you know. All I know at this point is they're trying to establish an outdoor hospital facility like we've set up at Chelsea Piers, a triage, like a triage. unit for the, the personnel that are attending to the scene, not to the injured in the scene. They can't get in to get any casualties out at this time. They don't know the extent of it at this point. What we're doing now is going up to get medical supplies to bring down trauma physicians down here to set up the surgical unit and the, uh, the triage unit down here. In addition to, if anybody out there can help, any vendors who have food or supplies, the firemen have no food, nothing but snacks. They need fluids, they need water, and they need protein foods. This is just the beginning of what they're facing. So we're, And we need masks. We need TB masks. Holy shit! What is it? It just went down. What just went down? World Trade 7. It did go down before. No, seven, number seven. Oh my God! Oh my God! They're running! 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 They're Nice. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, 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 sir, sir, sir. Get off. Let's go. Let's go. getting ready. I want to make sure Vince can hear us. Vince, can you hear us yet? Again, that building collapsing just moments ago, 47 stories down there on Vesey Street. Uh, Vince was across the street from that building just moments before it collapsed and then went ahead and uh, filed a report a few minutes ago telling us about what he saw to be ground zero there. 